Welcome to this lecture number 6 on uh, zones of aeration and saturation followed by the aquifers and their characteristics classification. So, in the previous class, previous lecture we discussed about the ground water column and uh, specifically of course, we uh, uh, briefly dealt about this zone of saturation which is uh, below the water table and zone of aeration which is above the water table. And, uh, we also discussed about uh, how the in the zone of aeration how the water is held which is uh, basically in the in the intermediate zone which is the Vedo's water and uh, here. So, this water is held by hygroscopy and capillary action. So, here because of this uh, the attraction between the, the soil or the rock particles as well as the water. So, the water is held the water which is uh, not moving is held by these two actions and the capillary rise is the we also saw the expression for the capillary rise which is uh, given by this 2 sigma into cos theta divided by r into that is the the specific gravity. So, here now let us continue before this one I would like to mention. So, essentially so in this uh, Vedo's water water held by hygroscopic and capillary action. And uh, here, so in this ground water, so water is held by gravitational action. Okay. And uh, continuing with this, uh, the expression for this capillary rise. So, here suppose this is a capillary tube, which is basically a narrow tube, this is a center line and uh, the diameter of the tube is given by 2 r and so this is the surface tension force which is measured as force per unit length and uh, this is the angle theta and then this is the water surface the meniscus and uh, so this is the that is the liquid in this case it is water 
with specific weight gamma and this theta is the angle of contact which I have uh, mentioned here and uh, say for uh, if we further simplify. So, this uh, so the surface tension which is measured as the force per unit length. So, generally it has a value of say 0 0.074. So, this is a uh, grams per centimeter of course, uh, so this has to be multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity that is 9.81 and then this uh, specific weight of water again this is uh, 1 gram per uh, cubic centimeter again it has to be multiplied by the so this multiplied by g. So, this g is the gravitational acceleration which is say 9.81 meter per second square and this theta is approximately equal to 0 degree for uh, water and uh, clean glass same thing can be assumed in the for uh, water and soil also same can be assumed for water and soil also. Therefore, the expression for this capillary rise h. So, it uh, reduces to say 0.15 divided by r ok. So, as uh, can see from this one the capillary rise h which uh, which determines the height of the capillary zone is inversely proportional to the size of the capillary pores that is uh, the the radius of the capillary pores that is uh, basically here we are approximating the pores into the equivalent uh, circular shapes and then taking its radius. So, this h as uh, this uh, the equivalent uh, the circular pore uh, radius gets reduced. So, the height of the capillary rise increases and uh, here it is mentioned that say for different uh, samples that is the say the material grain size in millimeter then capillary rise in centimeter. So, here on the lowest level where the capillary rise is as low as a just 2.5 centimeter, we have this fine gravel whose uh, grain size is uh, that is uh, 0 0.052 to 0 0.2 0 0.02 okay and further as we go. So, this is uh, next is uh, 
coarse sand of course, there are uh, intermediate formations are there. So, here uh, coarse sand for which it is a one the grain size is one that is a point one to point five millimeter and it has a capillary rise of uh, 13.5 centimeter and then I am sorry I made a mistake here. So, this is uh, this is uh, just let me correct this one. So, this is grain size is 2 to 5. And coarse sand, the grain size is 0.5 to 1. Let me rewrite this again. So, this is the material grain size in millimeter, then capillary rise. in centimeter. See on the the coarsest is one we have say fine gravel the grain size is say 2 to 5 millimeter and the capillary rise because this is a too large grain size. So, therefore, the pore size is also too large. So, therefore, the uh, capillary rise is as small as say 2.5 centimeter followed by very coarse sand the grain size is 1 to 2 millimeter and the capillary rise is say 6.5 centimeter. Still let us uh, go to a still smaller this one that is a coarse sand where the grain size is a 0.5 to 1 millimeter and then the capillary rise increases as the grain size is getting reduced and correspondingly the pore uh, uh, size also gets reduced. So, this is 13.5 centimeter. Then the medium sand has a grain size of uh, 0.2 to 0.5 and the capillary rise of say 24.6 millimeter centimeter I am sorry. Then followed by say fine sand the grain size is say 0.1 to 0.2 and the capillary rise gets further increased to say 42.8 centimeter then it is the silt which has a grain size of 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 millimeter the capillary rise increases to 105.5 centimeter and lastly it is the fine silt it has a grain size of say 0 0.02 to 0 0.05 and the capillary rise is as high as 200 centimeter so you can imagine say how the the grain size as the material gets uh, finer and finer in terms of its grain size so, the capillary rise increases and uh, this has been so source is uh, a study by Lochman. Okay. And uh, now let me also represent here the the distribution of uh, 
water in a coarse sand water distribution in uh, coarse sand above water table after drainage. So, here suppose this is the So, this is the moisture content. So, this is the soil moisture content as percentage and then this is the height above water table in centimeter. And uh, here, say let us say this is uh, say this is twenty, and then this is forty, and here let us say this is uh, Twenty forty. So, here this variation is it will be something like this. So, this is the, so this represents porosity and uh, here this represents capillary zone and uh, above this this represents the intermediate zone. So, in the capillary zone just at the water table level, so the moisture content is uh, exactly equal to the porosity and as we go above the water table, so the moisture content goes on decreasing as you can see from here and uh, so when we reach this intermediate zone so the moisture content it represents only the hygroscopic water so whereas here so here you can say this is the the hygroscopic component and then this is the the moisture content held by capillary action and then this is the moisture content held by hygroscopic action so therefore so, in the intermediate zone it is entirely the water is held by water is held by hygroscopic action. Whereas, in the capillary zone water is held by hygroscopic and capillary action. So, you can see how it uh, varies and uh, say, so just at the water table level, just above the water table. So, almost all the pores are uh, filled with uh, 
uh, this uh, moisture, soil moisture. And then as you go higher and higher, it is only those pores which are continuous. So, they will be filled with water and uh, as we reach this intermediate zone. So, it is only the, the hygroscopic water which is the water held by the force of attraction between the in the, uh, the spaces, the void spaces of as well as the the air as well as the soil uh, or rock particles and then the water. So, so this is how for, uh, for in the zone of saturation the water is held entirely by gravity and that is for all the zone below the water table and as we go above at the water table. So, this is the water is held by hygroscopic as well as capillary action and as we reach the intermediate zone. So, the number of pores uh, which contain soil moisture get, gets reduced only those continuous pores. Uh, so, they first of all for this capillary action they must have a very small size and then. So, the through which this capillary rise takes place due to the force of attraction between the, uh, the soil or rock particle and uh, water due to the surface tension force. And uh, above that in the intermediate zone it is entirely by the molecular, the intermolecular attraction between the soil moisture, the air voids as well as the soil or rock particles. So, now let us consider the and this water content which is held by various uh, actions whether it is the hygroscopic action in the uh, intermediate vedo zone or the hygroscopic as well as capillary action in the capillary zone both in the zone of uh, aeration and further below in the zone of saturation by gravitational acceleration. So, this moisture can be measured by various methods such as the gravimetric method as well as the other the tensiometers and so on. And the same thing here we can mention here by a tensiometer basically it may it uh, just pulls. So, this water which is held in the that is the measurement of soil moisture. So, this is by gravimetric method in which we take the weight measurements and also say by tensiometer. So, in this tensiometer suppose this is the soil column and here so this is the the tensiometer. So, this is the porous cup and then this is the unsaturated uh, soil 
and here So, this is the suction head which is essentially the water held by the molecular uh, attraction between water, air particles as well as soil particles. So, now let us come to what is known as the available water or available moisture content. So, here suppose I represent, so this is the soil moisture and uh, here, so this is uh, 0. So, the maximum soil moisture So, this is a soil moisture content which can be which is possible is denoted as the field capacity. So, this moisture content let me represent this as m c. So, this is the field capacity moisture content. So, this field capacity is essentially the maximum possible water which can be held in this zone of aeration and also the minimum this is amount of uh, soil moisture corresponds to. So, this is the permanent wilting point or simply it is known as the wilting point. moisture content. And of course, there is also an intermediate this is known as the optimum moisture content. Content or say OMC. So, here so essentially so, this field capacity is the amount of water which is held in a soil after wetting and after uh, drainage has become negligible. So, generally it is after say 2 days of uh, drainage. So, the after 2 days of the keeping it for draining. So, all the water which is uh, generally goes out through drainage that uh, gets drained out and then the moisture content which remains in that soil sample or soil or rock, sam rock sample is uh, the one which represents the field capacity moisture content and the total amount of uh, moisture is uh, the volume of that is the known as the field capacity. And similarly, so this wilting point is the uh, Uh, the moisture content it represents the moisture content wherein the plants start wilting. That means, say below this wilting point, so the all the water, all the moisture it is held by only molecular uh, attraction between uh, moisture or water particles as well as air and uh, soil or rock particles. So, it is not given away by the soil. So, therefore, plants cannot extract any water by capillary action. So, the plants start wilting or uh, drying. So, these are uh, drying plants, drying plants. So, further, so they die. So, this difference between 
the field capacity moisture content and then the permanent wilting point. So, this is known as available moisture content and similarly, the difference between the field capacity and optimum moisture content which is slightly higher than the permanent wilting point. So, this is known as the readily available moisture content. So, essentially so the all the irrigation so they depend upon this readily available moisture which can be easily extracted by the plants through capillary action. So, therefore, in this irrigation what is done is, so as, as soon as the soil moisture gets depleted to this optimum moisture content level, so then one irrigation supply is given. So, then the moisture content increases to field capacity moisture content level and then further again by the due to plants metabolic activity due to evapotranspiration as well as evaporation, the soil moisture gets gradually decreased and again it, when it reaches this uh, optimum moisture content, then the next irrigation is given. So, like this, so this is the, this is how the process of uh, irrigation continues. Now, let us come to the, the moisture content in the zone of uh, this one. So, this is available moisture. So, here, so this is in the zone of aeration. Okay. Now, let us come to the zone of saturation, which is the Now, let us come to available water in the zone of saturation. Again here, so in the zone of saturation, so most of the water is held by is, uh, this uh, zone of this is uh, gravity action. Of course, very small amount is held by this hygroscopic uh, action. So, here let us define say two terms which is the specific retention So, if we denote this as S r. So, this is the ratio of the volume of water which is retained in soil against gravity after saturation divided by the total volume. So, this V r is the, the water volume retained in soil. after saturation against gravity. And this V is the total soil or uh, rock volume. And let us also define another terminology here that is the, the specific yield which is denoted by S y. So, here so this is equal to V y divided by V where again V is the total soil or rock volume and this V y is the volume of water 
drained and obviously, so this is by gravity. Okay. And uh, so, this uh, n which is the porosity of course, few authors in the previous class I think I represented this by alpha and few authors they use the notation n. So, this is equal to the specific retention plus specific yield. So, this is a very important relationship between porosity and uh, specific yield as well as specific retention. And uh, here, so essentially, so if we if I represent, so this is the water table. So the water retained above water table is known as the field capacity. water here you can say that is moisture retained in the zone of aeration. So, here you can say the uh, let me use the word maximum water and uh, here. So, this is the and below this it is the water retained. So, this is water retained corresponding to the specific retention S r maximum water retained in the zone of saturation. So, essentially this field capacity as well as the water retained. So, they represent the same water content while the field capacity represents the water the maximum water retained in the zone of aeration wherein all the pores are saturated, while the water retained represents the maximum water retained in the zone of saturation and obviously, so this is corresponding to S r. So, this here you can say this is and both are uh, against gravity. Okay. So, like this, so the essentially this uh, field capacity as well as water retained. So, they represent the water which is which can be retained uh, to a maximum extent in the zone of aeration as well as zone of saturation. So, now let me also represent here. So, the And as uh, this ground water is one, so our objective is to harness or to extract ground water as much as possible. So, therefore, the specific yield is more important to us. And here, suppose I represent on a scale the specific yield. expressed as percentage. So, here on the lowest level say this is uh, 10, 20, 
30, 40 and in the highest this one that is around say 44, we have peat which is basically the vegetative matter which has decomposed and then the, the lowest specific yield is observed in clay which is uh, so peat it has 44 percent and this clay which has the minimum which is 3 percent and in between we have say the dune sand thirty eight percent and we have say medium sand which is say twenty eight percent and we have say coarse gravel. Twenty three per cent, and we have sandstone twenty one per cent, and we have limestone. 14 percent and we have silt here with generally uh, this one. Okay. So, these are some of the, the typical values of uh, the specific yield in different materials ranging from the minimum of uh, 3 percent in found in clays and the maximum of uh, 44 percent found in uh, around 44 percent found in peat. So, in between we have so this silt, limestone, then sandstone, coarse gravel, medium sand, dune sand okay, and of course, few more. Uh, so, so, this is the the variation of uh, specific yield in different uh, soil or rock formations. Now, let us come to the aquifers their uh, classification characteristics and classification. So, so these aquifers are essentially these uh, water bearing layers. So, here you can say in this uh, So, typically we can say, say this above this limestone all these uh, rock or soil formations they represent aquifers and below this limestone all the soil or rock formations they represent either aquitards or aquicludes or aquifuges which you discussed in the previous class in the previous lecture. So, here I would like to draw your attention to a schematic cross section 
representing the various aquifers So, these are the impervious. So, this is the impervious strata. So, this is the recharge area. So, this is the ground level. And here I would like to represent the water table or the piezometric surface. So, this is the water table and uh, this is piezometric surface which represents basically the energy. And here after this recharge through different uh, forms of precipitation. So, this uh, soil moisture, the water moves in this, uh, this is known as the confined aquifer, which is essentially confined at the top as well as bottom by confining layer. So, this is the confining layer. And here, suppose we drill a well here, which penetrates all the way up to the confined aquifer. And uh, here, this one, we may find, we may So, this is water table so this well is penetrating through the all the way and here this is the confined aquifer and then here this is the unconfined aquifer also known as water, let me write here. So, this unconfined aquifer that is water table aquifer. So, this unconfined aquifer represents the topmost aquifer, which has only the one confining layer at the bottom, whereas its top surface represents the water table, which is uh, subject to, which is undulating, and it, it 
it is depending upon the slope, the areas of recharge, discharge and pumping and other factors. And in this case, so now let us come to this well which has been dug in the, which has been drilled in the, in the area, in the land area which is below the piezometric surface and it penetrates all the way up to the confined aquifer and here the total, so this uh, piezometric surface represents the energy, the total energy at uh, that level for this depth up to all the way up to the confined aquifer. So, therefore, here the, the well starts oozing out water corresponding to this piezometric surface and such a well is known as a flowing well. So, here the water gushes out of the well on its own. So, no artificial pumping is required and uh, on the other hand suppose we drill a well which penetrates only the unconfined aquifer. In this case, the surface, the water surface will be corresponding to the water table at that location and so therefore, this well which penetrates only the unconfined aquifer is known as the water table well. And on the other hand, suppose we drill another well which penetrates through the confined as well as unconfined aquifer. So, here the water table corresponds to one and uh, the piezometric surface and this well is known as artesian well. So, this confined aquifer is also referred to as artesian aquifer which is also known as a pressure aquifer. Okay. So, so there are uh, three types of wells, the flowing well, the water table well as well as the artesian well. So, in the flowing well, the water gushes out on its naturally by uh, because of the the ground surface being below the piezometric surface there, whereas in the water table well as well as the artesian well, so the uh, water surface will be below the corresponding to the water table or the piezometric surface and this artesian well, it uh, draws from both the confined as well as unconfined aquifer at the bottom as well as unconfined aquifer at the top. So, we will uh, stop here and we will continue further our, I uh, will continue our discussion in the next lecture. Thank you.